that. <laughs> like, we'll just we'll skip that first game where Lopez wins with his Azoth, and I'll just skip to the swap to Ragnar. And see, now you see him going with something completely different early on, rather than just kind of float around his opponent like he did with Manexo in the oh. beginning. Oh, oh my god! Oh, oh my gosh! Oh, they it's get still back. It's so hard to take someone out that early because they also have to burn their options. You're going in so hard, they still will get jumps off of those hits. If you don't interrupt a recovery for anything, it's so hard to get the KO in that stock. Fiend still wants it though. Even burning the dodge to get the GC sideline just a little bit too high. Neutral Sig comes out. Lopez was too high and too right for that to hit. Weapon Toss goes, hoping to clean it okay. up. GC down signature, and that's gonna be the first stock going the way of Fiend. Fiend gonna get that one, but still took a lot of damage there. Like, that was a nice burst out to start game one. Okay, getting some more damage built up onto the second stock of Lopez. Lopez doesn't even get the weapon pickup, finally grabs it, and he's got Fiend stuck on this corner. Another neutral light. Big damage back to back. But maybe out 30 plus onto Lopez. Has him in the orange and then hit a neutral signature. Hoping for the top or the backside of that to hit. Okay. It's another down air. Both of them are red. Again. You can see that when they get hit. But Fiend is up a full stock. That Sig is going to take him out. Lopez is going to have his choice. And he's going to stick with the axe. I thought he might juggle there for a second. Maybe opt for the bow. But no, he's going for the axe. D-Light gravity cancel neutral heavy from Fiend. He's going to take that stock the way he ended one of the previous games. And now he's up a full stock on Lopez. Yeah, Fiend looking good. Gets the down light onto Lopez. Great stock extension on that first stock of Fiend. Like, he was deep red when Lopez started his second stock. And now they're both meeting each other uh, in white. But Fiend has that extra stock over Lopez. Now, Lopez is with a bow. Not sure. Yeah, he was yeah. hoping for the weapon spawn to come in. Didn't Ooh, know if he would go dodge. right for it, but we did see him immediately position himself to grab it. Nice use of that the signature stage. there. And then the neutral light to cover up if Fiend put the pressure on him and tried to punish the signature. Yeah, he was really expecting Fiend to make the approach, but great spacing oh. from Fiend. Oh, oh goes okay. for the third. All right, it was greedy, but you know what? It still works out. Fiend going to take game number one off the back of two N6 from the Qatars. Bro, just play Ragnar against Lopez. <laughs> just straight up, he doesn't, so know, how how to, he doesn't know how to play against Ragnar. Those N6, man. They, he was hitting multiple Axe N6, multiple Qatar N6, like getting those anti-airs onto Lopez. Now he's opting for the Barbara pick. Seen a lot of Brent Ooh. today. A little bit slow on the stage banning, figuring out exactly what he wants to leave open. Demon Island, Miami Dome, and Small Enigma. We have two Axe players here, so we could see ourselves go into Small Enigma, one of the tri-platform yeah. maps, but no, we're going to actually a zero soft platform map, and we're going to the Demon Island. Yeah, it seems like Fiend kind of likes Demon Island, so I feel like if you're going to leave that on the field with some tri-platform maps, Fiend will likely lean into the Demon Island. And that's what we're seeing here as we get into game number two. Fiend versus Lopez. Fiend sticking with the Ragnar. All right, I'm going to blow your mind here. You just said that Fiend likes Demon Island. Okay, so remember that. Okay. A Fiend is an evil spirit uh -huh. or, ding, 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 a demon. This wow. is Fiend's home team advantage. He feels very comfortable here because the Fiend lives here. Yo, how, how high is your IQ? It's, 5, 000, it's 10, real 000? big. Certified Mensa level. That's some some forehead, five head stuff right there. But Fiend getting the better, or sorry, getting the better taken out of him from Lopez. Lopez doing a really good job getting these pokes on him. The Pogo might be looking for a signature soon to get this first stock off of Fiend, but it's just going to be a Pogo to beat out the recovery. All right, that whole little world and narrative that I just <laughs> built for you right Gone. there. Uh, I even had more to expand on, and and I'm just I'm just not even gonna say it because it's just really not relevant. Because Fiend is losing here, Lopez kind of destroying him so far. Oh, oh this nice is the option cares. back. Nice weapon toss. Okay, here we go. So we what's that thing it. called in the background in the middle, like the red thing? What's the word for that? I'm a dumb white American, so I don't know. Oh, sorry. I was, I was like, are you talking about like the demon in the background? No, like the little like gate thing. Oh, I forgot what that's called. Okay, well it doesn't matter. We'll just yeah. It, we're call, we'll call it a <laughs> gate. Chat can tell us whatever. Fiend assigned to Kurenai Gaming. They have that Ooh. emoji in their logo. Yeah. This is Tori. Fiend's home. Called the Tori, T-O-R-I-I. A -I. little bit of knowledge there. Fiend 
Still in the red, though. Lopez doing a really good job getting the damage. There's the end sig. Despite the fact that Fiend keeps looking like he's coming back in, it's still Lopez in the lead here on Demon Island. You keep repping and talking up this map, but it's <laughs> Lopez who's winning. And you see, like, Fiend spawned and immediately just ran at Lopez unarmed and then got hit, like, four times. So this is just really not looking good. Lopez's axe is very scary on this map against all of the approach options that Fiend has. Gets oh. the weapon toss, finds the down air, finds the neutral signature as well. This game could be wrapping up here very quickly. Fiend in the red finds the axe side signature, a very powerful side signature. That was like one of the main kill moves back on uh, Ragnar's early release and in that oh, yeah. world championship. We'll see if he can find a perfect stock here. Yeah, don't count him out yet. He did a really good job in the last one of getting a perfect stock onto Lopez. Those nares, those side lights, they're not going to be knockout tools. Neutral light, but the weapon toss! Catching Fiend on the wake up recovery and Fiend going to get taken out, tying it up 1-1. One, one. Don't go to the Demon Island. It is not your home. <laughs> it's not your home, Bandit, please. That home's been gentrified to Barbara. <laughs> Yeah, maybe it, it used to be your home, <laughs> yeah. and then you sold it, and then Lopez moved in and changed everything. Fiend's going to be picking up a Brin of his own, but of course not the crossover Brin. It's going to be just the standard Brin versus Lopez on the Barbara going to game number three. Different the stat defense. Lines. Yeah, I was just about to say. Defense stance coming out from Fiend, deck stance coming out from Lopez. Very interesting uh, preferences there from both players. All right, Lopez going to get the first two hits there. Gets a third one. Dodge through from Fiend. Can't catch the dodge of Lopez. So it's just going to be a sidelight in response so far. Lopez definitely swinging a lot more than Fiend does here. Neutral Sig is going to come through, find the hit onto Lopez. Fiend finding his way back into this. He is in the orange. Basically a full color change behind. Now trading dares both of them in the orange. Fiend towards the end of that getting closer to red. Both of them kind of have the same ideas in mind. You're seeing them like dare after one another, neutral light after one another. Ooh, the down Sig's going to launch and get the knock out for Lopez to take the first stock and the lead here in game number three. It's interesting, kind of like you were saying, they had similar mind, uh, similar ideas of what they were looking for with their axes in hand, but Lopez was just getting it more frequently, getting those neutral wins, the dodge up to avoid the end sig. Fiend might be wishing he switched to the Queen Nye right now. Ooh, Go the for the double? And then the side air over a recovery. That was definitely a split second decision that he really had to consider whether he wanted the side air to kill off the side or the recovery to kill off the middle. That seemed like a muscle memory thing there. Like after he got the second downlight, he was like, uh, I just go for the side air there. Yeah. Uh, I feel like if he was going to go for the GC downlight, he should have just gone for the raw end sig. Like the frame data is not that different. Weapon toss goes down. Lopez doesn't get hit by it. Nice oh, chasing him into the sky, but didn't have too much. Wanted to maybe wait to see what Lopez was going to do. They were so close to one another. Dodge, but yeah, Lopez they're doing the same hit. thing. But they're they're straight up playing spear the exact same way. One will nair the other nairs. Oh, okay. the, that okay. should chasing. Nope, needs the ground pound. Doesn't get the hit. Lopez with the turnaround and fiend. Going real low, and he can't get the wall touch. The Pogo and Lopez is going to get the second stock. This is what I was saying, though, is that Lopez is, is still getting the better of Fiend. Like, they're both getting these, like, side lights and trying to get that downlight follow-up, but Lopez is doing a better job of reading the way that Fiend's reacting out of these setup tools. And Lopez is usually the one to hit, right? Yeah. Like, Fiend will nair, and then Lopez will nair, and Lopez's will hit. Fiend will side light, and then Lopez will side light, and his is going to be the one that hits. Getting those neutral wins a little bit more frequently as well. Fiend, he's being so patient off his dares in comparison to the Ragnar, right? Like, he's doing a dare and then just standing there. Whereas the Ragnar, he would do, like, dare and zig, dare and zig. Wapitas goes out. It's a slow one, though. Lopez floats above it. <laughs> Side lighting. Oh, they're both hunting for the KO option here. The sidelights building up the damage onto Lopez, the neutral air. You see Fiend chasing, but then he doesn't do anything. He backs down to the main platform, almost Ooh. hit the dare. 
D-Light into the recovery, unarmed, has the axe, neutral sig comes out, feed punish, it goes for the read with the neutral signature, the hit the side light, immediately goes for the recovery. Oh man. Oh, and the weapon toss from Lopez. Gonna close out game number three. Fiend, he had he had it in his hands, the fingertips, but he went for setup tools and he wasn't like, he wasn't pulling the trigger on those. Like he was getting so many side lights and then he'll dash forward like you were saying and then not doing anything. I'm just like, Fiend, just, just go for all read because if it works, it's great. It was so close towards the end. The damage that they both put out was 586 to 571. Oh my gosh, that game was so close between these two brands. Neither one has chosen a character yet. Lopez is the first one to, and now we're seeing the Queen Nai swap. It's gonna be the wall of Queen Nai. Lopez has to be very careful about the way he plays this, right? Fiend's gonna be doing a lot of those down sigs if Lopez plays uh, low to the ground, but if Lopez starts reacting by going vertical, that's perfect downlight into NSIG territory. And we've seen Fiend just build a wall of Queen Nai snakes before. Now we have some critical decision points that Fiend will not have to make, right? He won't have to decide, okay, do I go for the D-Light side air? Do I go for the double D-Light recovery or anything like that? He's just going to hit that D-Light in SIG. And basically, no matter where Lopez is, because we're on small Brawlhaven, if he's in orange, there's a good chance there's going to be a knockout. Well, Lopez is doing a good job of keeping Fiend in the air. A lot harder to do those signatures if you're in the air. But there you're seeing those down six come out. Hitting a side air. Gonna try to cover this corner. Expect the down sig. Waiting for it. Oh, he's just gonna back off. No sigs come out from Fiend and Lopez gets up. Fiend throws away the spear. Oh man, this is starting to get much more even. That could be, and it is a KO. Fiend let Lopez back up and Lopez immediately came on the stage, started putting out axe damage and found the KO with the D-Sig and is continuing the pressure, stripping the field, has more moves coming out from this spear and continues wow. this. Wow. Fiend is almost orange. Fiend is just getting chopped up by Lopez, but the downlight N-Sig will be the triage, will slow things down and he wants to play the Katars out against Lopez. Interesting. Oh, down here into the neutral signature, sending off the screen, not quite KOing. That wasn't uh, Queen Nye. Fiend might have found himself losing a stock Ooh. there. That one is for certain going to KO. Lopez with a full stock lead here in game four when he's up 2-1 in the set. Tournament stock here for Fiend. Playing unarmed against Lopez. Lopez gets the two-piece. Fiend still just finding neutralites. Lopez just isn't letting Fiend do what he did with his Queen Nai against his other opponents, man. Lopez is controlling everything here. The complete flow is under Lopez's control. Flow of weapons, flow of damage, flow of positioning. Fiend's starting to fight back, keeping Lopez weapon starved. This is his way back into this. Goes for the raw neutral signature after the sidelight. Doesn't find it. More neutral signatures. Lopez isn't in the area, though, so those aren't oh. hitting. How did he get through that? Iframes. Down light and heavy. Lopez is one hit away from taking Fiend out and locking him into that bronze medal. Down light and heavy, and heavy from Fiend. And he's going to stick with the Katars again. Staying over on the right side of the stage. Somehow finds the way to that weapon to grab the spear. Throwing out more neutral lights. Some of those okay. safer moves. D-Light into the neutral sig. Going over to the Katars. I think he had the option to pick up the spear there before Lopez put any pressure on him. Lopez has a weapon now. Fiend has to be so careful. Oh! There it is. Fiend tried to punish the down light, missed the end sig, and Lopez with just a gentle side air for the stock is going to close it out. 3 1 over Fiend. That punish right there must have felt so good for Lopez once he realized he wasn't going to get hit by that neutral signature. That is going to lock the Queen Nye there for a considerable amount of time, and Lopez was in the exact right place at the exact right time. Lopez going to win 3-1, earn his...